Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Precious Metalverse. Today, we're going to talk about gold using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we spoke about gold, you know, just yesterday, um, and uh, I mean the price is actually moving somewhat quickly here. Uh, just yesterday, it was actually less than two thousand dollars. Now we are already at around, you know, twenty forty. We went up to uh, we we already went up higher than that as well. But there was a model that I, I put out a year and a half ago on on gold using logarithmic regression. And, and you might wonder, well, why don't I provide more updates on it? Well, simply put, it, it's just because gold hasn't really done a whole lot <laughs> since then. Um, if you look at this, this was published on, on June 26, 2020. We were talking about the current fair valuation of, of gold. And uh, silly me, as always, has my video blocking it. But I think it was around $1,400 or so. But this, in fact, was uh, you know back in, in June of 2020. When, when the price of gold at the time, um, you know, was, I, I believe it was around like 1800 or something like that, somewhere around like 1800 or so back in, in June of, of 2020. We can actually just go quickly take a look. Um, so, so June of 2020 was, was somewhere back over here. So yeah, it was around maybe 17, $1,800. And so since then, the price hasn't really changed a whole lot. Um, but with that said, and, and in line with the idea that there's always a bull market somewhere, and, and sort of building off the video yesterday where we talked about the bull market support band for gold having held support here, I want to I, I want to continue to talk about things. But this time we're gonna we're gonna discuss it with regards to to logarithmic regression. Okay, so we have our this is our fair value logarithmic regression fit. Okay, and what you'll notice is is just like Bitcoin, there are, are periods of undervaluation and overvaluation. And we can be undervalued for, for long periods of time. We can also be overvalued for long periods of time. Now, I know this sort of goes against the idea that whatever the price is, is the fair value. So perhaps my terminology of calling it the fair value logarithmic regression trend line isn't the, 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 the best way to, to think about it. But I hope you understand, like what you know, the, the the reasoning for calling it that. Basically, there's just periods where we go through overvaluation, periods where we go through undervaluation, but they can last for long periods of time. One thing to consider with with precious metals, and if you are invested in the cryptoverse and you and you do have a position and you do get a position in precious metals, you need to remember that they they typically move a lot slower than cryptocurrencies in terms of their price action. Like for instance, this bull run here by gold. You know that perhaps once it came back down to the fair value, it started in September of '76, and and did not end until until about three and a half to four years later. So I, I don't think that we can you know we can look at, at at a chart on gold and say all right you know these crazy price predictions could come true you know even in a year or two. But if you're looking at say multiple decades, then perhaps it is somewhat reasonable to to talk about these things. And you know I've always asked myself. Why are there so many, so many gold bugs? And for full disclosure, I do have a small position in gold, um, but it's not nearly as large, I think, as some people. And I think the reason there are so many people that that like gold are for similar reasons why why a lot of us like Bitcoin, and and that once upon a time it it went on on a crazy rally, and and then once upon a time again it went on a crazy rally. And so people are just sort of waiting for, for, in fact, the next one. So I want to use the logarithmic regression trend line to maybe to maybe show a pattern. And, and we actually talked about this same pattern a year and a half ago. And perhaps we'll talk about the same pattern another year from now. And, and maybe gold will be at $2,300. I don't know. Um, but one of the patterns that we noted back then was, and when, I, when I'm talking about back then, I'm talking about this, this video here. Where we were, we were discussing, discussing the, like the extension from the fair value, is namely, you know, sort of this trend line of, of starting at the undervaluation area. We'll call this, you know, we'll, we'll mark this as as one, going up to an overvaluation area. We'll mark that as two, coming back down to the fair value. We'll mark that as three, and then going off for a parabolic rally over the course of several years. And we'll call that four, followed by 
the the long bear market down, and we'll we'll call that that one five. Okay, um, and so then if if we're sort of looking at, at that pattern and then wondering if that's going to repeat, we basically say, all right, well we start at an undervaluation one, we go to an overvaluation two, we come back down to the fair valuation three, and then we have our potential parabolic rally uh, four, which then leads into a, a long bear market after that. So, you know, I, I do think as much as as much as as much fun as we we make fun of of, of the idea of of gold making moves and and even on a day like today when it's up two percent, everyone everyone in the gold community is like super excited and super happy. And and you can see that the Bitcoin is up is up two percent today, and and no one cares, you know. So so it it, it does provide like a, a very different perspective on the market. Um, you know, the argument is is you know certainly Bitcoin could outperform gold over the next you know decade or even over the next three two two to three years, but perhaps gold will outperform Bitcoin over over a shorter time scale. Regardless, you know, I, I don't mean to to only talk about one asset class forever. I do think it's useful to sort of expand around and talk about various things. And and right now we are potentially looking at at gold um, entering into a, a more prolonged bull market. Okay, um, and and one of the interesting things, and and the, I, I should say, what you know, one of the concerns that I have, which I I think will be thwarted soon enough, is you know, is it going to be a similar type thing that happened in 2011 and 2012, where we put in a high and then we put in a lower high after, you know, after holding the bull market support band, right? So, which is the 21 month SMA and the 21 month EMA. So basically holding it as support, putting in a lower high and then going into a bear market or which is basically the same thing, right? High, holding it as support and then ultimately coming back down and going into a bear market. That is the downside risk. So we always have to we always have to consider what the downside risk is. I think that is the downside risk. However, I, I would say that if I were if I had to take a guess, I, I would say it's more likely that gold will will ultimately take out these highs and, and come to higher prices. This is kind of what I would I would speculate on. Um, but but as always, I, don't, I do not have a crystal ball. It's just pure speculation. The other thing to look at with regards to the to the logarithmic regression trend line is the extension from it. This is actually the natural log of the price over the the fair value. And and you can kind of see that same thing, right? Like if we draw a line at at 0, which is is where it, it's at the fair value. So what you'll notice is you'll see that undervaluation 1, the extent or yeah, the over the, the short overvaluation 2, a retest of the fair value and then an explosive rally 4. Sorry four, and then that long bear market, five. And so I guess the argument is, are we looking at one, two, three, and then four would sort of be like the next, sort of the next step. So, you know, this this first area right here, you can see that it, it, it actually came up just shy of where the first one came up. So like if we were to take the extension from the fair value at this point and go up, it went about 104% above it. Uh, if we compare that to most recently, what happened in um, in in 2011, you can see it was more so about about 85% or so above it. If you then compare that one to the actual blow off top rally, this was you know a 471% move, which is about I mean it's almost 500%. So that's a 6x. And and if we were to assume that the next one is somewhat thwarted and it doesn't go up quite as high. Um, let's just say it went up, say, three or four hundred percent from the fair value over the next few years. So let's suppose the fair value eventually is going to be be higher than it is today. Right now, I think it's in the between fifteen sixteen hundred. Uh, according to this, it, just so I can get you an actual number, it's at fifteen forty three. But again, we can spend long periods of time undervalued and overvalued. So then, if we if we assume some type of extension similar over over say out in a few years. And then take that up. Let's say 300. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like a, a very strong possibility that gold is going to go to to those high prices. Uh, back over here in um, you know in in 2020, I, I was discussing gold going to like 5,000 <laughs> to to 10,000 dollars. 
in in the 2020s and the late 2020s. I don't know if that's going to happen. It, it you know, I, I feel like when I made the video back then, I, I was more optimistic. And and then, um, you know, we basically spent the last the last year and a half not doing a whole lot. But again, I will take it. We'll take it in stride. So I, I'm just saying, you know, if the pattern were to play out, it could take us. You know, it could take us. You know, two x, two and a half x, or something, which would be kind of weird to think about it going that high. And I'm not really sure what what would have to happen in the world. Um, maybe what's going on right now, right? To to have it go that high. But it is at least it is at least something to consider, and I, I think it's at least a, a pattern worth paying attention to. So we're we're ultimately looking for. A, a continued rally to new highs, and and then to, and then probably to see this come back down into a bear market following whatever whatever bubble phase ensues, if in fact we get one. And and again, as always, because we always want to discuss the downside risk, I think the 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 downside risk mostly is just is it a is it a is it a repeat of what happened over here, or is it more likely is it more likely a, a repeat of, of what happened over here, right? Where you come above it and then you test that bull mark support band multiple times in route to a, a much longer um, bull market, okay? So I actually personally think it's it's more likely to be this case than, I, I think it's more likely to be case one than case two, but you need to understand there are risks involved. We've seen these setups before and it's really hard to know which way it's going to go. Um, but if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to, establish a position yourself, you need to know what the risks are. Okay. So again, I mean, I don't know how quickly this thing is going to move. We covered it yesterday for like the first time on the public channel in a year and a half, because again, the, the, the last time we really talked about it was back in, we actually had one video after this one, I think in August of 2020, but it was on, it was on gold, silver, and, and a couple other like palladium and, and, and one other one. Um, but it has been about a year and a half since we spoke about it. Uh, but in line with the idea that there's always a bull market somewhere, and considering that crypto hasn't really done a whole lot recently, um, you know, perhaps it does merit some further discussion on on other asset classes during this uh, you know, fairly fairly historic risk off time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check out the sell on the premium list. You can find a link to that in the description below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.